not even attempt to turn. Robbie figured he was carrying a little bit too much speed to make the corner and drove straight off. He was off into the dirt. He's able to get it stopped before he got to the tires. And now he's uh, waiting for traffic to go by. Slobby, who uh, probably did the right thing by pushing it off instead of trying to make the turn. To get Three crazy guys together, we, we would be way too crazy, so I'm pretty mellow. So you're, yeah, you're even yeah, keel. I can even those guys out, so. Now, do, do, do they mess with you at all? Um, what's what's the atmosphere whenever you three get together? You know, it, it is serious at times. Certainly, uh, we all can be very, very serious in our competition meetings and engineering meetings, talking about upcoming races or, or debriefing on, on the post event uh, that we've just got through uh, running, like here at Sonoma, we'll meet on Tuesday and kind of close the book on Sonoma and then get ready for Daytona. But, uh, you know, any, uh, you know, functions that I go to that, that has Michael around, uh, he, he's certainly a character and, you know, he's uh, he's a funny guy, but he can be really, really serious and he's a very good golfer. So, uh, Michael, Seriously? Michael acts goofy, but he's a really good golfer. There's a lot more to, to being a driver than just being it behind the wheel of the car. You've got meetings after meetings and, and you know, pre-race stuff, post-race stuff. Give us, yeah, give us I mean, a little insight. Yeah, I think I uh, tell everyone that, that being a driver, certainly we, we get to go out and race a stock car in front of thousands of fans and that's uh, that's a dream job. We all love it, but there are a lot of responsibilities that uh, that they come with that. Uh, a lot of pressure from you know the manufacturers, the sponsors, uh, the fan base, uh, my family, uh, the families of all the employees that work on our race cards. Uh, you want to do as good a job for them as you can because uh, you know they, they put their heart and soul into building those race cars. Take a lot of time out of their uh, family schedule, but yeah, a lot of traveling. Uh, you know, usually we're gone Thursday to Sunday every week. Weekend. Uh, I'm at the race shop all day on Tuesday, and so my weekends are usually Monday and Wednesday. That's my two days to kind of do some of the odd things around the house, whether it's, you know, cutting grass, going to the grocery store, taking care of the baby, you know, just whatever. My wife and I have got a little uh, one-year-old at the house, and so it's kind of a full-time job just, just doing that. Uh, but yeah, the, the Monday and Wednesdays are, are my off days, but sometimes we'll have a, an event, maybe a test session, uh, we're testing early at Kentucky, so uh, after we race Daytona on Sunday night, uh, we go back, uh, unload everything, reload everything, and we've got to be in Kentucky on Tuesday for uh, an all-day oh, test on Wednesday. So, yeah, this is a busy part of, of our schedule, but that's okay. That's what we signed up for, and we, we enjoy it.
2014, 326. That was also beneath the old lap record set a year ago at this event here. So I must tell you that things bode well for all of our front runners. After final round of qualifying, of course, all of them are on the pole. Uh, we have Larson who qualified fourth, and then of course Tony Stewart, the third of those three, underneath the old lap record, qualifies in the seventh position. Tony Stewart has had a very, very <laughs> difficult year, uh, to say the least. When you say the word Tony Stewart, they say 26 in points. That does not confuse. He's having a much better day today. I had a chance to talk with Tony quite a bit at a very famous race called the Chili Bowl indoors in Tulsa, Oklahoma in January, where this year, instead of being a competitor, he actually was very deeply involved in track maintenance. Many of you know that Tony's involved in several racetracks, most notably the famous El Toro Speedway in Rossburg, Ohio. I thought Tony was about as relaxed as I'd seen him in a long time. He's been on a couple of years in some very difficult circumstances. As Tony said to me, he's almost lived the life of a king most of his life. So when you take a look at his age, he extract a couple of bad years. He really has nothing to complain about. But he went into this year, I thought, with a fair degree of confidence. It's not worked out. Uh, he looks much stronger today. Tony has always been a driver who has taken off a little bit later in the year. Uh, and I know he's hungry to get back into victory lane. So uh, we're keeping an eye on Tony Stewart, the gentleman who has won here at Sonoma and has been one of the best in the NASCAR family when it comes to road racing. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., for example, out of Olive Branch, Mississippi, drove 360 cubic inch sprint cars, drove for a guy named Shorty Chambliss. The real opportunity for Ricky Stenhouse came in an unusual circumstance where a, one of the best in the USAC uh, inventory is a driver, many of you NASCAR fans know, Tracy Hines, who has driven in the truck and in the Xfinity Series. Tracy Hines was set to race for Tony Stewart Racing when he had an accident on a motorcycle on his own property 
going, frankly, very slowly. They crashed into a very heavy fence and really caused some problems for Tracy for a couple of months. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. got the call to replace Tracy Hines.